How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. I'm here. Last week, I was not here. It was a crazy week last week, to be honest. Uh, my whole week was derailed. Uh, we lost our production machine. It went down, so we couldn't record anything. I had a family emergency. My mother uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, had a heart attack. She's great. She's fine now. So I, I could, I could, I'm going to talk about it, and I'll, I'm fine. Everything is totally fine. She had a heart attack last week, so I, uh, I could not do a show. <laughs> it was a lot of stuff happening, but everything's fine. We're here. We have a lot of wrestling to talk about this week on the show. AEW Collision was a very interesting show going up against a lot, a lot of competition. It was a top-tier boxing event that happened. There was UFC also that happened last night. Next week's not going to be easy either with SummerSlam happening. Probably their most direct competition that they've ever had for Saturday. But they made some very interesting moves on this week's show. We're going to talk about CM Punk being the real world's champion. And what's in the bag? Well, we found out what's in the bag. I think a lot of us knew already what's in the bag. But now we have our answer here. I was convinced it was the dog collar. That first time he brought it out. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I was out of my mind. MJF and Adam Cole versus FTR. Great match. A lot of people disappointed on how it ended. The Bloodline storyline continues on SmackDown. NXT Great American Bash preview for tonight. And SummerSlam weekend next week. The boys are going. The producers of the show are going. John and Matt are going to be there. All this and a whole lot more today on the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Turn a break. <laughs> I'm dying at the visual at, at, at two of my producers. They're both Michigan boys. And they're going to, uh, they're going to Ford Field. And I'm like, I want you guys to document this. Like, I want the, the snow cones. You know, you guys have, like, the intertwined arms. You could lady in the tramp with the spaghetti. I want the whole thing documented. Sending them to SummerSlam next, next week. So it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of wrestling, guys. A lot of great wrestling. I don't have enough time to talk about all the stuff that, I'm, uh, that I enjoyed the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I will say, before we go into Collision, I thought that I, I was not crazy about Dynamite. Uh, a lot of the criticism was on par from everybody that I've heard, all the top analysts, people that are way better than me. Uh, lacking star power, you know, why wasn't Kenny on? Why weren't the Bucks on? They kind of played a part in Collision. But it, it's an interesting shift in these two brands that AEW has. And now we're seeing even more of a definitive shift with another world championship. Let's start off with the show. The show began with a ladder match. For Andrade's mask, Andrade defeated Buddy Matthews. They did everything in this match. I mean, every hard spot you could imagine, they, they did. Uh, such great talent, right? And you know what? This is what a second show allows you to do. Allows you to highlight. A guy like Andrade should be on TV every week. A guy like Buddy Matthews should be on TV every week. I absolutely love, I mean, great. They have it. And it's great to see them getting presented in this way. This, this story is going to probably continue moving on. Um, you know, the, the little rumor is that the match at All In will be uh, a trio title match for, uh, with the acclaimed. And do we start seeing a little bit of a breakup here? Do we shift them into a different feud? Does Andrade bring Rushin for backup? You know, these are all great questions. I, I obviously it's going to lead to Andrade and and Malachi, which I'm I'm psyched for. Definitely, I want to see that match. There's a lot of history between those two. I'm very excited about this. I, I very much like Buddy Matthews, and I very much like Andrade. As far as uh, you know, the wrestling goes and being presented on TV, I want to see them prosper uh, with this second show. Darby Allen defeated Minoru Suzuki. I don't even want to read that. That feels wrong. Matt, doesn't that feel dirty? The murder grandpa getting murdered. Yeah, I don't want that. I know, you know what? Delete this. I'm not even going to talk about it. Delete this from the line. Darby <laughs> Allen defeats Minoru Suzuki, the Pancras world champion. I've told the story. I went to Boss Rutten's gym. Uh, Randy Katami, one of the head trainers there, possibly a partner in the business, a friend of mine, 
And every time I was in LA, he would invite me. He's like, hey, come to Boss's gym. So I went and my wife went and we would all, you know, we would do like a whole like three hour session there. We loved it. And my wife is looking at me. She goes, what's that belt? And I'm like, the pancreas is the king of pancreas. She goes, first of all, I, I read that wrong every time I read it. First, I read king of pancakes. I'm like, oh, it was like an eating competition. Then I read king of pancreas. And I'm like, that can't be right. So she had to ask. So our biggest joke is Minar Suzuki was the king of pancakes, according to my wife. Samoa Joe defeated G Gravity. NASA should look into this. I like Joe on TV. Now we got the big story here. CM Punk comes out. Tony Schiavone in the ring. He starts in with the what's in the bag. He takes a shot, talking about people not being on TV. He's there every week. I don't know if that was a shot at the Bucks and Kenny. I, I could have been. I don't know. So he says, on the 32nd anniversary of Bobby Heenan showing up on WWF Superstars, I believe it was Superstars, with the World's Heavyweight Championship, the one that's behind me right here with the Bret Hart shades, shows up with the belt, and he mentions the real World's Champion. What a, that, that thing is stuck with wrestling fans forever. He reveals his world title and calls himself the real world's champion. He grabs black spray paint in the most Hogan-esque NWO fashion. Spray paints a big X on that title. You know, I've been talking about this and people are telling me I'm nuts. This guy did the leg drop. He's doing the, 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 the ear to the, the, the hand to the ear, the ear to the hand. He's doing this for people listening. I'm sorry. You can't see me do the worst Hogan hand to the ear. He's doing this, the hand thing. I'm like, okay, he's doing, he's slowly <laughs> embracing <laughs> jerk Hogan. And we get it. He spray painted it. He spray painted the belt. He's a real world champion. Ricky Starks comes out. Sets up a match for the title next week. There was a shot as, uh, you know, um, Punk wanted to bring his own referee. Ricky says, I don't care where you have to go. You could go down the block to Stanford because they were in Connecticut. Got a big ooh from the crowd. They announced Ricky the Dragon Steamboat will be the special guest referee. And how this man calls it right down the middle. You know what? Fonzie could have done well, right? He's, he's an honorable referee. He always calls it right down the middle. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this, MG. Yes, sir. Ricky, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, special guest referee next week for the real world championship between CM Punk and Ricky Starks. Well, the story here, um, he did this in ROH, I do believe. Uh, that's because they referred to it. Uh, yeah, well, well yeah, Ricky, Ricky was before. the special guest referee. Yeah. yeah. So there's, that's a callback to that. That's one. Two, um, he, supposedly he's an honorable ref. He won't, he won't uh, call it. He'll, he'll call it right. So that's what they're going with. So somehow that'll play into the story, I'm sure, of the match. Yeah. Uh, Very exciting. I mean, this is fun. This yeah. is a lot of fun. I don't know where they're going with this because the only real place they could go is a ladder match for the, for the titles. Him and MJF. And he could do a great double turn here. Slowly building to that, aren't they? I, I, you know, we'll talk about that main event. A lot of criticism about that main event. I may go into the second segment here with this because uh, we're starting to see the pieces fall in. Also, I thought it was really funny. Everybody's criticizing, you know, where's the card for this all in? It's a month away. We don't know where it's airing, even though I, I, I reported that it's on BR. There's no official statement. Johan Promotions has it on their website as a pay-per-view for businesses to order. So I'm imagining you're going to be able to do closed circuit once again. And you're going to have this in business pay-per-view. So you're also going to have regular pay-per-view distribution if it's on Johan Promotions because Johan works with the cable providers. You know, I don't think people, uh, I, I, this is a very inside baseball for cable, but Johan Promotions and I think it's GCC or GGC. GG, GGCC events are the pay-per-view providers for businesses. And they go through your actual carrier. So if you have Spectrum in your establishment, 
you don't call Spectrum to order the pay per view. You call Johan, and they they do it for you because it's the pricing is all whack. Like uh, last night's boxing fight was like a three thousand uh, dollar pay per view for a venue that has up to three hundred people. You know, to, like three hundred max. So you know they're not cheap these things. Uh, but I, AW being on there that that tells me that they're going to be on traditional pay per view. Also, I could be wrong. It's just me taking a very uh, easy guess here. But they're going to build that card up. Is that the match at all in? Is that the match at all out? I, I very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. I, I maybe we'll come back to this. We'll circle back to this because there's a lot to talk about on how they could do this and what they could do. Bullet Club Gold, Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn, and Juice Robinson defeated Action Andretti, Darius Martin, and Vikingo. Vikingo. I thought this was fun. I, I Again, Juice Robinson, MVP, breakout star of the year for this company. Love everything that they're doing. That presentation with the, with the guns uh, and Juice even worked even better. I think they need to lease that 50 Cent song and keep that for every time they need a special occasion. Love it. Mercedes Martinez defeated Kiara Hogan. AW World Tag Team Championship. FTR, Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood. Defeated Adam Cole and MJF. This match was centered around hitting that double clothesline. MJF saved Cole, but got pinned in the process. They teased the breakup when Cole turned his back, expecting MJF to attack them, attack him, and they ended up hugging it out. So this is continuing. You know, a lot of criticism. A lot of people thought they should have won the titles and then maybe drop it later on. I'm holding my thoughts on this. I'm going to see how this plays out over the next couple of weeks. When we come back from break, I want to pick up where we left off here because I want to touch on, on CM Punk a little bit more. And I want to touch on MJF and Adam Cole a little bit more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline Sunday edition. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. That's where I put all my scoops. I don't post it anywhere else. I post it all on Twitter. Let's go into this. A lot of interesting stuff here. So CM Punk, I want to touch on this. Second, he, there's a second world championship now in this company. There's two. AEW's going to have to address if this is recognized. AEW's going to have to talk about what they're doing here. Does Tony, does Tony come on TV and say he does not recognize this world championship? Does Tony start blurring it on TV? Listen, I know a lot of guys from AEW watch this and listen to this. Can you please, just at least one week, just do it for me. Blur that world title. But do what WWE did sometimes and blur it when it's around his waist so it kind of looks like he's not wearing any pants. You know, that was one of the, the, there was one time Flair's on TV. I'm watching it and he's wearing the belt and, they, you know, they're blurring it terribly. It's like the worst ability to blur. And my mother walks in. She goes, is that man wearing pants? And I looked at her, seven years old. I said, no, he's not. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with this. They could have a lot of fun with this. Uh, you know, it, it's, man, they should sell that title. Someone should grab a can of spray paint and start spraying it because they're going to sell a whole lot of those. With two big shows coming, coming out, you know, that's, that's a merch opportunity. Think about how many people bought that the replica WCW world title. With the NWO spray painted on it. Great marketing opportunity for AEW here. But, I mean, the big story is where do you go here? Uh, they have to do that MJF match, right? And, and now you have two big shows. One of them, is it Adam Cole? And is the other one CM Punk? He faces the winner? I would be intrigued by both matches. Now, I don't want to... I, I actually want to see Max in him more than Cole in him right now, but... It, that face to face, man. That that's 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 a really hot opportunity you don't get to do too often. You know, we've seen it obviously in wrestling. Punk's done this before. The summer of Punk 2011 was this with John Cena. So you know, it, it kind of fits the narrative here. It fits the mold. But every time they do this, it always is good business. Whenever there's a double champion and you get that moment, it's it's fantastic. I I love that. It's it's one of those wrestling tropes. That works for me. Maybe not for you. 
That's why wrestling is fantastic. There's a little something for everybody. But the other part of this is what do you do with Adam Cole and MJF? MJF is a fantastic fake baby face, right? Everybody knows he's not being genuine most of the time, but there are moments of weakness where he is being genuine. He came off very genuine. Not the crying that he lost, but, you know, I the story is telling you he's still a piece of crap, but him and Cole have something. And does, does Strong interfere in this relationship? Is he the one that messes it up? Or does MJF turn on him and Adam Cole, you know, is like, wow, you, I was, you, you know, you were right. Or does he turn on Adam Cole and that becomes a match? If he costs Cole the title or does something to Cole, MJF then goes off to Punk and Adam Cole and Roddy have a match. There's a lot of avenues here, which I... I'm gonna. I'm holding my opinion on this to see where they go because I don't know where they're going or how they're going there. The end goal has to be CM Punk and MJF. Bottom line. But you know, I enjoy the show better than I did Dynamite. Did you, Matt? Did you enjoy the show better than Dynamite? Oh, absolutely. It was there was a lot of good stuff there. I especially like how MJF seems to be that that the end there where he was conflicted and Cole was teasing like okay I know you're gonna do it I'm just gonna turn my back and let you hit me and he didn't that was that was a nice touch just added another layer to it all in all though I really enjoyed the the show there was it got a little uh lost for me in the middle but um with the women's match I think but other yeah but it was it was a bad time because think about how much they did right you started yeah. off with that crazy ladder match. You went into Darby Allen, Minoru Suzuki. That's an attraction right there. Then you got Samoa Joe and Gravity. Then you got CM Punk mm-hmm. cutting this promo with Ricky. Then you got the Bullet Club Gold match, which they are very hot right now. They're a hot property. Even though the match was, you know, it wasn't anything on the line here. It was still an important match. Then you had the women's match. Uh, yeah, and they did I, get I, some I, of the women think, on there. Not yeah. that they, yeah. they, there's nothing against them. It's just the placing of it. It, it was a very right. boom, boom, boom show. And it was a little bit of a cool down, which they needed before the main event. So very cool. Uh, I, I enjoy Saturdays. I like watching wrestling on Saturdays. It's working for me. It, it's not something that I'm missing. Considering the fact that we had a UFC pay-per-view and a great boxing fight. SmackDown on Friday. The story continues to SummerSlam. Jey Uso and Roman Reigns discuss their match at SummerSlam. I got a fly in this room and I'm trying to get it to go away. Uh, I'm not crazy. I'm not grabbing my screen. Roman took credit for, for the main event, Jay Uso moniker. He also asked Jay why he's still thinking he could beat him. Jay says, because I already have. He beat him twice. Jay got the first pin ever on Roman when he was in the Shield, and he got this pin on him. You know, eventually you need to create another opponent for Roman. Do they have that person? Or does it matter? Because this is such a hot story. You know, when Hogan was was going up against Earthquake, I don't think people, and it's a terrible comparison. I don't even know why I brought it up. I got Hulk Hogan on my screen holding the Intercontinental title, and I think it's cursed me for the day. Did you guys see that photo? That's a cursed image. Hulk Hogan with the IC title. I posted it on my, uh, on my Twitter. Um, you know, that, that nobody actually thought Hogan was going to lose it, or maybe they did. I, I, I don't remember, but... Sometimes you need these good matches. Can Jay, I, now Jay's a more believable win. If there was somebody to beat Roman Reigns, the storyline continues. It's a family member. But they did a couple weird things on this show. So you also had Jay Uso defeating Grayson, Grayson Waller. Did you see what Grayson did? He, did? he did the people's elbow or his version of it in front of Roman. In front of on to Jay, I thought that was interesting because what happens now? Do we get an appearance at SummerSlam? Does he show up? There's a writer strike. There's a there's an actor strike. You know he's available. What's Dwayne got going on? I'm not starting that rumor. One fun fun uh, note on that. <laughs> if that told, were to I've happen, told, <laughs> I've been told by WWE a billion times that Dwayne is coming, <laughs> and it doesn't happen. So. <laughs> The, the, a little note on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just to help. Just to, if they were to do a match, I think, uh, I, and, and this is the window. They say, okay, we have one window, and it's not Mania. Um, 
Survivor Series would be it because they both debuted on Survivor Series. So okay, yeah, sure. Just something, just something to throw something. out there. I don't Whatever. know that that's even Whatever. possible. Uh, I I want them to, uh, you know, they they are in a in a semi rebuilding phase here with a lot of the undercard because the main event is so big you could do some cool stuff. Santos Escobar defeated Rey Mysterio, 14 minutes, 15 seconds. The match was stopped due to an injury to Rey. There were a lot of conflicting reports regarding if this was a storyline or legit. Dave updated and said that he may have suffered a concussion, but he was fine now, so maybe it was just a scare. LA Knight defeated Ashanti Diodonis in a minute 30. Listen, man, LA Knight is so over. <laughs> There's, I, I don't know if it's by design that they're slowing him down. They're trying to build him up even more. But when I was at the Garden for that house show, he was over. When I was at SmackDown at the Garden again a couple weeks ago and he came out before the show, he was huge, big, huge pop. It was also later revealed that LA Knight and others will be taking part in a SummerSlam Battle Royal. All right. Okay. Does LA Knight win? Because you got to give him something here. You got a U.S. title he could very easily have. And he's getting really interesting. People are into him. But there's going to be a point that you got you to gotta decide. Do you push him or do you not? I see that there's a lot of criticism, right? That he, you know, he borrows from The Rock and he borrows from Steve Austin. I'm not, it doesn't bother me. I, I know some people are very bothered by the comparison here. By his moniker. But I, I, it feels fine. Like, it's a, obviously, we, we, you know, you can see whose influences are, but it's working. If you're nine years old and you're cheering for LA Knight, did you ever even see any of Steve Austin? Did you ever see any of, of The Rock, you know, in their peak? No, most likely not. Unless you got a crazy father like, like me and I'm just watching old Raws from 98, 99, then maybe you see it. But you really, you're, you're not, it's not like part of your, your, your modern watching. So I think it's fine. Listen, I, obviously there's people that are watching and YouTube's available, whatever. But I, I, if he's getting over, he's getting over. Charlotte Flair and Bianca defeated Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville in a non-title match. I feel like Charlotte's gotten a little lost since coming back. We spoke about this on Matt. Man. I'm curious to see where they go here. Karrion Cross defeated Carl Anderson in a squash two minutes. Jay Uso defeated Grayson Waller 11 minutes, 12 seconds. Solo attacked Uso from behind. Jay ducked it, hit a super kick. Roman ra ran into the ring. Jay landed a spear onto Roman. Solo planted Uso and grabbed a hole of Jay. Uh, Roman hit two spears to end the show. This is going to be a big part of SummerSlam. Story of the spear. There's a lot on the line here, and this is going to be a big SummerSlam. 50,000 people in that building at Ford Field. It is wild. You know, you want to talk about wrestling and the, the decline in viewership. Uh, I, they're most likely going to have one of the most attended years ever uh, for WWE. Uh, the product is very hot. 50,000 seats there. There's probably going to be 80,000 in Wembley for AEW. There's more big shows coming. Arthur Rash is going to probably have about 10,000 people in there. You know, wrestling is one of those things that overnight it could get picked, it could pick up again. A couple good decisions and everything changes. And I think right now for WWE, they've made a lot of those decisions between Cody, between Roman. There was a ton happening here. When we come back, a whole lot more Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline Sunday edition. Let's talk about SummerSlam before we go into NXT Great American Bash. That's starting soon here. We got the SummerSlam Battle Royal. LA Knight Sheamus announced for it so far. I'm sure there's going to be more. Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler. This may be Ronda's last match for a long time. There are very early rumors that she's maybe gotten a little bit of an itch to go back to UFC. Somebody said to me, and again, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not as connected in the UFC world as I am in professional wrestling, but 
you know, a great opportunity would be UFC 300. Gives her enough time to train. Uh, Misha Tate would be a great opponent for her. Someone she could beat, but it's also Misha Tate wants to beat Ronda. And they have this uh, long-term feud. Everything is pro wrestling. Everything is, you know, <laughs> everything is pro wrestling. Uh, Logan Paul, Ricochet. This is a big moment for Ricochet. He's gotten a nice little push here. Uh, Logan Paul's a great opponent for him, and I think they'll do a spectacle of a match. Triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship. Asuka defends against Charlotte and Bianca. I don't know where this could go. Does Charlotte win it and become... What, what title reign would this be for her? 48? 95-time Women's World Heavyweight Champion? I don't know. Uh, WWE Intercontinental title. Gunther defends against Drew McIntyre. I'm curious what they're going to do with Drew. Has his time passed? Does he need a new coat of paint? It is one of the most unfortunate stories. Uh, the rise of, of Drew McIntyre was so organic and so well done. And honestly, only a global pandemic could have ruined it, and it did. And, and I feel like he never got that second chance. I hope he does eventually, but uh, it just didn't have the same oomph after that. We'll see what happens here. Gunther, fantastic. World Heavyweight Championship, Seth Rollins defends against, against Finn Balor. There could be some shenanigans in this match with Judgment Day, my new favorite stable. Such a great group. They're young, they're cool. Rhea looks like a million bucks. Dirty Dom is fantastic. Did you hear that Vince came up with that moniker for him? Yes. Ah, he's dirty. Mm. Great. It works. He's been adding a lot more buzzwords back, if you've noticed, over the last few The buzzwords weeks. are There's coming been... back, yeah. We need, we need, yeah. We need mm -hmm. occupations to come back. That's Please what no. we need. <laughs> I want a sanitation worker. I want a truck driver. I want a guy that, that messes with nuclear bombs. I mean, listen, Oppenheimer's, Oppenheimer is a huge hit. Why, isn't, why don't we have an atom bomb on TV? Synergy, guys. We need it all back. We need all the occupants. We need a clown. You know, like, and I think we should go. We had an IRS agent. That's pretty fitting with the news right now. I want like a DMV worker. That's the new gimmick. Someone needs to, someone needs to be a DMV worker. And it's like, it like doesn't really care. Not that all DMV employees don't care. I know there's probably someone that's going to say, hey, listen, I care about my job. You do. But not here in New York. I can tell you, not one person at the DMV in New York City cares about their job. You show up, they tell you, come back in 18 weeks. My license will be suspended tomorrow. I don't care. We need a guy like that or a girl like that on TV. What's another occupation we could do? A dental hygienist. Why don't we have that? We're not good enough to be a dentist. We already had that. Let's just start small. County clerk. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. What is Brock's occupation? He's a hunter, right? Farmer, man. Farmer? Yeah, he's a farmer. Cody and Brock, this is probably their last match. Uh, Brock very much likes working with Cody, and the same thing for Cody. This is fun. Very much like these two together. Old school style. You know, big guys. You know, they're, they're just great, great wrestling. And the main event, tribal combat match. For the undisputed WWE Universal Championship and the title of Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns defends against Jey Uso. This is going to be a very emotional, very up and down, classic WWE style main event. They're going to draw you in. They're going to pull out a little bit. They're going to pull back in. It's I, I expect them to take their time and tell a great story here. Great card. So who do we see? Who 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 do we see in that? Do we see all the the whole family? Do we see like Rikishi and uh, I don't know. They uh, should. They should do something. And, Sika, and you know, hey, and, listen I, again. Fantasy booking, which I hate doing here, but the, you have all the, you have all the tribal leaders, the elders there, right on a panel watching this, and Roman go, gets out of line, right? He gets out of control. The elders are telling him, "Stop it! Stop it! Stop it!" Roman is saying, you know. You know, you know what to the elders. 
disrespects them. Maybe shoves somebody. And here comes The Rock. That's the moment. That's the moment, right? There's that's ever a big time moment. That's, Not saying that they're going to do that. If there was ever that, time or, to bring him in, that would be it. You know, it, it fits with the story. And sometimes things have to make sense. And I'm sure they'll be able to make it make sense somewhere down the line if they, they don't do it now because they've done such a great job with this story. But, all right. Well, let's see what happens. We got NXT Great American Bash happening. NXT's been on a very positive roll. The ratings have been fantastic. Spoke to someone at USA. Uh, they are outperforming their expectations. Let's put it that way. Totally outperforming. But listen, the last couple of weeks have been great. They, 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 they figured out a little bit of the magic here, right? Bring a couple names that, that are recognizable. Uh, put some of these guys from NXT on mainstream TV. Uh, on the networks. You know, on a main product. Uh, get the names out there. And we're seeing this. Carmelo Hayes. This dude is great. He is impressive. And seeing him on TV, you kind of get a vibe that, okay, you know what? This guy's important. He's the NXT champion. Carmelo Hayes defends against Ila Dragunov. Dragunov is unbelievable. I'm looking forward to seeing this match tonight. Tiffany Stratton defends against Thea Hale. Uh, for the women's title. Dominic Mysterio defends against Mustafa Ali and Wes Lee in a triple threat match. You know, I, 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 I like Dominic being there. And I like him having this title. And I think it's positive for him. And I mean, we've seen what it's done to ratings. We saw what his quarter hour did. Not that that matters to any wrestling fan. And it really shouldn't. I re recently had a very interesting conversation with someone at WBD. And they said to me, I find it humorous how the audience is more obsessive with ratings than we are. Nobody cares about the week over week. It's the trends that we look at. Six weeks, eight weeks, quarterly. How are the ads selling? What's the ad revenue like? How's the marketing working? And it was, it was, it was funny. He, he, he said he's never seen it with any other show that, that they've, they've had. This is someone on the, on the sales side. You don't have arguments on, uh, on Twitter, or, or maybe you do, but not, not, not magnified like this, about the ratings of Game of Thrones. Doesn't happen. Dominic defends again Mustafa Ali Wesley. Weapons, wild match. Roxanne Perez, Blair Davenport, Gable Steveson, and Baron Corbin. Let's see how, how, how Gable looks. I mean, he's, an, he's a fascinating guy. He's a real deal athlete. He, he, he's contemplating going to the Olympics again. I don't know if he's going to compete this year. But he's a remarkable, remarkable wrestler. Real... Uh, a real wrestler, amateur wrestler. Pro, res pro wrestling is very real. All right? I'm not disparaging pro wrestling. NXT Tag Team Championship, Gallus. Def defense against Tony D'Angelo. Stax. All right. And the kickoff show. Uh, who's on the kickoff show? Frazier, Dragon Lee. Leon, right? It's a it's a, it's a mixed, mixed yeah mixed match uh, eight eight person tag um, my screen my screen froze and I can't I can't see who's in it oh Lash Legend and Jackson too yeah. okay all right the so. tragedy here is Dragon Lee is on the pre show this guy should be featured more but that's yeah, just fantastic. my opinion listen he'll get there he just went there some of the highlights from from Shawn Michaels uh, NXT media call he praised Dominic. He referred to him as mature and professional. He also said Dominic respects the business and has done well in NXT so far. Michaels believes Dominic will be able to find himself more in NXT. You know, they, they were looking for a Latin star, this company, for the last 20 years since Rey Mysterio. And they have tried and they've tried. And for whatever reason, sometimes their fault, sometimes not their fault. They've not been able to create one. And now they have one. They have one that is really surpassing everything that they've done in the past. And a lot of people don't like Dominic 
A lot of people really like Dominic. They they talk about his in-ring work. Listen, the kid, he's 20-something years old. He was thrown on TV with his dad during the pandemic. And to be propelled into this position and to be comfortable doing it says so much about his ability. Let's wait a little bit. Let's wait. Let's let him grow. Let's let him figure out everything he wants to do. I think this is a great package. Is it is it complete? Is it 100%? No, it shouldn't be. It should never be 100%. But they created something very cool. My kids love Dominic. They love the Judgment Day. That's hitting something here. Again, I, I see wrestling through very different lenses. Obviously, again, I say this every week. I want to see Danielson in a 45-minute match every week. That's the wrestling I like. Nice and slow and grappling. You're not going to get millions and millions of people tuning in for that. You need storylines like this, like Dominic Mysterio and the Judgment Day. Like DX, like the NWO. These are things that we've seen in the past. Very cool. Regarding Car Carmelo Hayes, Michael said Hayes is looking forward to getting onto the main roster call up soon and shouldn't be ahead of himself. I mean, they're kind of teasing. He wants Hayes to uh, take things one show at a time. He's about preparing Hayes to be the flag bearer. So, uh, you know, this is they've, they've, they've created a star here. And a lot of the concern was who else are they going to create after uh, uh, uh after this, you know, this new generation of NXT talent. And it looks like they have a couple people here, which is very good. It's a nice mixed bag. We'll see what happens. Vince McMahon underwent major spinal surgery. The surgery lasted over four hours and was deemed a success. Uh, so he's slowly becoming robotic and mechanical, and that's everybody's nightmare. And Jamie Hayter will un is unlikely for all in. She's out. The injury is worse than expected. And uh, she'll be out most of the year, which is terrible, terrible. Guys, when we come back from break, we got a few more minutes to the show. Going to touch on a couple things here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. Guys, do me a favor. Give me your feedback. Talk to me. At Andrew Zarian on Twitter. I have a lot of stuff I'm waiting to talk about this week. I'm just going to say that. There's a lot of stuff I'm going to drop this week. Or a couple things I'm going to drop this week. But one interesting thing is AEW trademark, AEW Plus. And I reached out. I did not get an answer from anybody. So that either means nobody wants to talk to me about it or they don't know anything about it yet. So, and normally when we see when AEW trademarks something, it's not for nothing. We saw them trademark collision back in February. And we saw what's happening there. I mean, AEW Plus could be a trademark for many things. One speculation is that it's their streaming platform with, uh, with, with Warner Media. You know, if they could create something. Now, I don't know if they're going to create their own streaming backend. I, I don't know if that makes any sense to do. Or is this going to be integration in some in, a, in Max and they're going to call it AEW Plus? Maybe you could pay a couple bucks and get access to this. Only. Maybe you could pay for HBO and get a, you know, get, pay for Max. I don't know. I, I don't think they know either right now. We still don't know where this show is ending up, right? They have not announced anything about All In. So it's all very interesting stuff. Next week, we're going to probably have some more information on that. I'll post it on Twitter. And everything else happening in the world of professional wrestling. And SummerSlam next week. So we're going to have a SummerSlam show next week on, the, on, uh, on Wrestling Observer Live. Guys, this was a blast each and every week. I love doing it with you guys. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. And we'll see you next week on Wrestling Observer Live. See you next time.